Welcome to this demonstration of BMC Client Management. I will be using version 20.08. This is the latest release. My name is Steve Gibbs. I'm a senior systems consultant with WrightStar Systems. And in this demonstration, we're going to cover the following use case scenarios. One is the customer needs to install Notepad++, doesn't currently have it installed. He's got a new project and requires that software. Uh, customer has no administrative privileges on the local machine. Uh, however, the IT department has already created a self-service package. So from my apps, the uh, customer will be able to go ahead and install the needed Notepad++. However, this package was created uh, several months earlier and another release uh, has been uh, has come out from Notepad++. And so the security team requires that all software be patched up to the latest uh, patch release. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I have remoted into a Windows 10 desktop running uh, 2004 version. And you can see that uh, Notepad++ is not on this system. Uh, let's just go ahead and type in uh, notepad see there's no notepad plus plus just to verify and I am going to launch my apps from the client management console so by right-clicking I'm gonna go ahead and launch that and once this loads it would show what I have available and you can see that I've got uh, launch footprints, launch track it. There's my Notepad++ installer upgrade. This is an uninstall that uh, if I want to remove it for demonstration purposes, I can just simply run that. So let's go ahead and install Notepad++. So you can see that it's downloading the application software. Uh, and then once everything gets downloaded to the endpoint, it will then uh, begin the process of installing the application. Now, the beautiful part of this is whether or not the user has Notepad or does not have Notepad or whether or not the user is actually actively working in Notepad, this one operational rule that I've created will take care of all of those contingencies. We'll review that operational rule in just a moment. <coughs> Okay, so now you can see that I popped up a little information window that says upgrading notepad to the latest version. Please be patient. And it does have a logo of the company right here, which is configurable. You can see that in the My Apps, it does show that it's installing. It says you may now begin using Notepad++. Click OK. And so... Um, this will come back as showing installed. Let me come over here and actually see whether or not Notepad++ is actively installed. So let's go ahead and type in Notepad like we did before. And you can now see Notepad++ is installed on the application. And uh, here we go. Slide this up and let's just check the version. And you can see this is version 7.8.8. .8. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to come back and actually show you what's happening behind the scenes. OK, I'm now in the client management interface. And you can see that I have a patch job happening right now. And this is the device that I just installed it on. And you can see where there's a transfer in progress where I am actually going to be looking for any active versions of Notepad. It can be any number of elements, but you can see that there's a transfer going on in progress. And here we go. The system is about to apply security updates. So I'm going to go ahead and close my version of Notepad. And I'm going to go ahead and select Continue. And click OK. And I am now actually upgrading to the latest and greatest version. So let's jump back and check our patch job. And I'm going to refresh this page. And you can see where the installation is now in progress. 
for this particular patch. And if I refresh it again, it's still in progress. <coughs> and I don't see any new information window. And checking my patch job again, see if it's done. Installation complete, reboot scheduled. So in this particular patch, what I did was I set my deployment options for this particular patch job to go ahead and force a reboot, even if one, see where I had left this unchecked. So it's gonna, uh, the patch management module is gonna be suspended until that reboot actually occurs. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel on that. And I'm gonna jump back to my remote session. And you can see a reboot is required. I do have the ability to cancel the reboot. So let's go ahead and hit cancel the reboot for now. All right, so you can see where Notepad++ has been installed. I have now been able to immediately patch uh, after this scenario. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come in here and we're going to actually run Notepad++. Okay, so I've just launched Notepad++. I'm going to check the version. You can now see that I'm running 7.8.9, which is the newest and latest and greatest. And I'm going to leave this running at this point in time. And I'm going to come back to my client management. And I'm going to go to my operational rules. And here is my Notepad++. These are all of the steps that I have available. I'm going to check to see whether Notepad++ is running. If it is running, I'm going to ask the user to close Notepad. If he doesn't close Notepad or she doesn't close Notepad, I'm going to close it for him. Then I'm going to uninstall whatever version of Notepad is running. I'm going to display that information dialog that we saw the first time where there was no, there was no Notepad. Then I'm going to install it again. I'm going to wait 13 seconds. And um, then I'm going to actually begin the installation. So this install package just puts the file, the installer package on the box. This is what will actually launch the installer. Then I'm going to update software inventory. Then I'm going to delete my application files. Once that's done, I'm going to close the dialog box. I'm going to say that, hey, um, it's been up upgraded. So there you go. Um, and then I've unchecked this box, which would allow me to go ahead and launch Notepad, uh, let the user know that we're done. And then I'm going to analyze the patch installation uh, the, or the patch situation again. So let's go ahead and republish this back out. So if I look at this, you can see where um, the user, me, went ahead and launched Notepad. But I'm going to go ahead and republish uh, this to my app so that I can run it again. So I'm going to minimize this Whoop. and I am going to come here and I am going to uh, refresh this page. And you can see that um, I can now launch it again. Now, remember what I'm doing here is I'm actually upgrading at this point in time. So I have Notepad++ currently running in the background. I'm going to click install again. And the process will begin all over where I begin the download uh, and the whole shoot and match starts all over. So let's just let that download. Okay, it's still downloading. Let's uh, refresh this page and see where we stand. Okay, we're starting to see the installation and we should see a pop-up message. Let's just see. Okay, I've got my pop-up message now. Uh, please save your work in Notepad. Now remember, I still have Notepad running. So let's just go ahead. I could check, do not upgrade at this time. I've got something going on. Or I can click OK 
typically the user would have the opportunity to save their work. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, you can see that uh, we closed Notepad++. And again, the same message appears. So we're waiting 13 seconds just to provide us enough opportunity for this demonstration. Normally, we wouldn't have that wait there for that long. And now it says you may begin using Notepad++. I'm going to click OK. And now, if I come back here and I launch Notepad++, You should see the 7.8.8 .8 version again. And there it is. So I was successful in removing it. So let's go back and take a look one more time at all of the different functionality that we have in that particular operational rule step. Okay, so we're back in the console. And let's go back and we can take a look at the actual logs. So I can pull this directly from the device and see exactly what we were able to do. Um, but again, it gives us all full detailed information as to each and every process that we did along the way. Let's go back to the actual steps. So because of the fact that um, we're using the workflow capability, so let's just take a look at this first step. Um, process name, I'm looking for this in, as in the task list. If it's running, I want to go ahead and kill the process, or at least not kill it. I want to identify it, right? So in my workflow, I don't want to verify. So I set up these conditions, and I want to say, uh, if the step completes, continue with the next step. If it doesn't complete, I don't find that it's actually running, then I want to go to step four. So what happens in step four? Well, in step two, I present a pop-up, I kill the process, and then in step four, I actually do the uninstall. Well, I have this one set that if the uninstaller fails, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the next step anyway. So I don't want to stop. I don't want the rule to stop. I want it to continue. And then all of the other stuff happens. So this is how we can go ahead and set up additional capabilities within client management so that if you deploy software, we have the ability of patching it immediately. So therefore, no vulnerabilities will be exposed in your environment. We have the availability of installing software with one rule or uninstalling the previous version of software and then upgrading it to whatever the version is that you want. And in this way, you're not constantly required to go out there and keep your software packages uh, up to date. It becomes problematic. The goal of client management is to reduce the amount of time that it takes to go ahead and provide uh, for these upgrades. If we can use the combination of software deployment and patch management, we can reduce the amount of IT effort to keep the software packages current. So anyway, that does it for this demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time.